So to show then that the gradient vector points in the direction of steepest descent, what we want to do is show that it is perpendicular to a vector that is tangent to the level curve at our point. So if we call this white vector, which is the vector tangent to the level curve, if we call that u, we want to try and work out what u is going to be equal to. To do that, we would say, well, we want a vector where the directional derivative in that direction is going to be equal to zero. Now, hopefully you've watched my previous video in the playlist on calculus where we talked about directional derivatives. At the end of that video, we saw that the formula for the directional derivative of the function f in the direction u is you take the gradient vector at that point and dot product it with your vector u in which direction you're going. So we now want to find a u such that this is going to be equal to zero because that will be the u that is tangent to the level curve. So we want a vector where if you dot product it with the gradient vector you give zero. Well that's a vector that's going to be perpendicular to the gradient vector. So we have therefore shown, without actually even having to work out this u, that it must be perpendicular to the gradient vector, and therefore the gradient vector must point in the direction of maximum ascent. Actually, that's not quite true. It could be pointing in the direction of maximum ascent, or it could be pointing in the direction of maximum descent. Both of those would be perpendicular to these vectors that are tangent to the level curves. However, if you look at the definition of the gradient vector, it's clear that it points in the direction of maximum ascent. So the definition, remember, is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So I've just used different notation for that here, simpler notation, where you just take f and subscript it x. This means partial derivative of f with respect to x. And similarly, f subscript y means partial derivative of f with respect to y. So this is the definition of the gradient vector. Hopefully it's quite clear that this is going to point in the direction of maximum ascent. Let me just talk you through that. So if we imagine our infinitesimal plane at a point x, y, if the partial derivatives are both positive, that plane is going to look something like this, because this steepness of this side of the plane here is going to be the partial derivative in the direction of x, and this steepness of the uh, side of the plane going into the board uh, is um, going to be the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So if both of these numbers are positive, then the plane is going to look something like this. When these two numbers are positive, that vector is then going to point in this direction, this way, because both the x component and the y component are going to be positive, and you can quite clearly see that it's then pointing in the direction of ascent up the plane. It's not pointing in this direction, which is the direction of descent. Opposite to that, if you imagine now the case where both of these are negative, then trying to draw that plane is a little bit more complicated, but I have had a go here. So now the this side of the plane here, the x side of the plane, it's going down because the partial derivative in the direction of x is going is negative. And this side of the plane, the y side of the plane, it's also going down because the partial derivative in the direction of y is negative. And you can see that the direction of maximum ascent is now in this direction here. You need to go this way, not this way. And indeed, that's what the gradient vector is doing because these two numbers are now going to be negative. So the gradient vector is going to be pointing in this direction, i.e. the direction of ascent again, not descent. And you can take the other permutations. You can imagine taking the other permutations where one is positive and one is negative. The pictures get more and more difficult to draw, but hopefully you'll be able to convince yourself that this is always going to point in the direction of ascent, not descent. So we've shown now that the gradient vector points in the direction of maximum derivative. What we finally want to show is that the modulus of the gradient vector is equal to the size of that maximum derivative. So we just want to take the directional derivative of the function in the direction of a unit vector pointing in the direction of the gradient vector. So uh, the directional derivative where our unit vector is now the gradient vector divided by its size, so scaled by 1 over the modulus of the gradient vector of the function f by uh, our formula that we have from our video on directional derivatives, that is the dot product of the gradient vector with this vector here, and by definition of the dot product, that is the size of the gradient vector of f times the size of this vector here, u, 
times cosine of the angle between them, well, the size of that vector is just the modulus of the gradient vector, the size of this unit vector is just 1, and then cos of the angle between them, well, they're, the, they're pointing in exactly the same direction, so the angle between them is 0, cos of 0 is 1, so that becomes 1 as well, so this is just the modulus of the gradient vector times 1 times 1, and therefore it is equal to the modulus of the gradient vector, and therefore the derivative in the direction of the gradient vector is the modulus of the gradient vector, and that is the maximum derivative of the function at that point x, y. Thank you for watching the video.